It's a good day to keep laddering it up. And today, I actually just think I'm going to do a tippy top, top tier, top of the line druid. I just first have to delete some of these other decks that we were fiddling with. Mechaden, Demon Zoo Lock, Mechathun Lock's actually pretty good. Typical odd aggro BS is good. All right, let's do it. All right, I'm going to build this deck to the best of my recollection. But it's a pretty tight deck list. So um, the big thing is we get Malagos, the god himself. Uh, and in, in addition, we get... Oops, not that one. There's another floop. There it is. Flabidinous floop. We get the floopinator out uh, as a four-mana Malagos replacement. Maligrid. And you just drop this. You can drop down Malagos and go double Moonfire. Wow, that got really loud outside all of a sudden. But you can also do the play Malagos. It dies. The next turn you play, play Forbiddenous Flute for four. Then you have a swipe. Jesus, that's loud. That deals nine damage. Two Moonfires that each deal six damage for a total of 21 damage. This is sort of like the uh, nice little combo for ten mana that you can do. But of course, the Twig of the World Tree permits you to do all that in one turn. Where you can play the Twig, play Malagos, whack with the Twig to regain 10 full mana. And then you can Flabidness Floop, Swipe, and Moonfire for 21 plus 15 damage, which is a shitload. Now that's a bunch of burst damage. Um, but the one thing that I want to stress is that there's what I'll call bad Malagos Druids. And this one that we're going to build that's a good Malagos Druid that a lot of the good players are doing is I think it's wrong to think of the win condition as Malagos. To think of this as a combo deck that's desperately trying to revolve around Malagos. In a sense, you should instead think of this as kind of a burst damage deck that has a lot of sources of damage. Obviously, this is one source of dealing uh, the damage, but um, Branching Paths is a very good card for armor gain. But... Uh, and you technically can draw a card, but the Give Your Minions plus one attack is really, really good with Spreading Plague. Just get in an extra, you know, 9, 12 damage there. And it's also good with the, what's her name, Giggling Inventor? To get three little nerds out. The rest of the deck is a lot of early game control. Uh, let's see, we have the Lesser Jasper Spellstones. These are great. Double Naturalize, just to ensure that we've removed threats. Uh, we have the uh, Wild Growth for Ramp. I don't remember if this deck runs Wraths. It probably certainly does, but I'm going to skip over it for a second. Wrath is a very skippable card in a lot of Druid decks. We're going to get the Ferocious Howls in. Ferocious Howls will improve our Lesser Jasper Spellstones. Um, let's see, what are the other things in this puppy? I think we do not run this. Nourishes, double nourish, yes. Malfurion the Pestilent, of course. Double ultimate infestation, yes. And what are the ones that we are missing? Someone help me out here. There's one Innervate that's run. Oh, thank you. Alex Straza is run, of course. And there it is. Arcane Tyrants. Here's the deck. Perfect. Here it is. This is this is the good Malagos Druid. Now, when you look at this, it's very easy to look at this and just be like... This doesn't really do anything, right? It's really easy to do that because... Again, it's very easy to look at Malagos Druid and go, oh my god, what I want to do is Malagos and I want a Faceless Manipulator so that way I can get huge, crazy, out of control damage. And I think it's simply, for one, it's not necessary to do that. And for two, I think that it weakens the deck. Because um, if you look at this construction, it's a pretty tight list. It's not even running Wraths. And I think that 
this actually has a much more distributed set of damage sources. We can deal some damage with spreading plagues and giggling inventors that get boosted from branching pads. We can get a little damage in from Arcane Tyrants and the Ultimate Infestation. We can get in a huge chunk of damage with Alexstrasza, a nice bonus damage from Malfurion, dealing three a turn. It's really great. That's we're going to be doing it, man. I'm very proud of myself, guys, because I went and worked out this morning. And friends were in town last night, so I went out and had a bunch of sushi and drinks. And part of me wanted to literally not work out. <laughs> wanted to wake up and be like, I'm not doing it. I'm not going to do it, man. You got to do it, Sean. You must. You must. So swipes are actually pretty important as late game damage. Maybe keeping one is okay. Definitely not the floop. Definitely not the branching paths. I think something like this. Claire Nibbles, I'm super thrilled that you asked. A question about HGL. And it's someone linked to the HGL FAQ. Which part of me is just like, oh, what an ode to Eric Burkhart. Who fantastically, sensationally, already has all that jazz covered. I think, okay, so here is my claim. I claim, ooh, do I want to do it for cards? <sighs> this is this is a very tough choice. I think I want to just ramp. So we're up against a Shutterwalk deck. So essentially, we just need to begin getting damage straight into MJM14. I should say, when I say it is something, what I really mean to say is the thing that would be threatening would be a Shutterwalk. He could be just some random other... He could be a Bimbo Shaman. Like to play with fire? No. A Bimbo Shaman. <laughs> I like the word bimbo. Artosis used it in a broadcast a few days ago and it just cracks me up. New Grandma M says, whoa, MJM are my initials. So the way this Shutterwalk Shaman works is not actually all in on the Shutterwalk. It actually builds a pretty sizable board with mind control techs, life drinkers, serenite chain gangs, even the two four drawn elemental from your work uh, from your uh, from your deck is pretty good. I you. Glacial shards actually pretty obnoxious in terms of maintaining a board. We're just gonna slam down Alex Straza. I mean, getting in that much damage is significant. Freezing us is intelligent because it reduces the probability of us twigging soon. Healing rain is fine. Let the pain speak to me. This is a naturalized target, undoubtedly. It's no such thing. It's no such thing as that. I do want to draw the cards. Just keep whacking away. This deck has a lot of damage in it. Around the BAM, another 5,000 bits. Around the BAM, I just want to say you have been extraordinarily generous for like two months. You've been dropping the 
thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. That's a lot. So, dude, so you're worth it? Holy cow, you're just making me blush so hard. I think this is okay to do because we have three, uh, two cards that we can dump. And we draw none of them. But I think it's pretty important to just get the damage in. We'll see what we burn. There's nothing. I think only Moonfire is the one that matters. Only Moonfire is what we really care about. Flabidness Flute would actually hurt a little bit. I'd mill ultimate infestation. That'd be great. That'd be a really good one to mill. Engaging TC-130 into dislocator. We can mill a lot of things. That's great. It's actually pretty great. Let's just burn it, huh? It's right here, right now. Let's just get it burned out, man. I think I don't want to Malfurion. I think I just want to double froze as hell. Alright, so if I peel a floop, we win the game. My hand is too <laughs> Ain't no lie, baby. Bye, 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 bye. Yeah. No one's gonna get to see how this deck works. Malfurion versus Mecha Jaraxis. You face. I must protect mm. you a while. How am I so lucky? You said I'm skilled, Zinniage. <sighs> Chuck it all back because zoos are very popular. And, you know, I, I'm hearing a lot of questions about what about getting in maybe a Prince Taldoram or a Faceless Manipulator or something else to clone to up the combo. Uh, Dream Petal Florist, I see as a suggestion. I want to stress really, really hard, do not think of this as a combo deck built around Malagos. Really, really don't. This is much, much more of just a whole lot of sources of spell damage. The V is dangerously deep. Yeah. We, we can just play Malagos and double Moonfire, and that's okay. That's like an acceptable play. I think we're just gonna double draw here. They pretty much got a giggling inventor. Hello. 
gonna be a little thinkful when I'm doing this. If I can just get like a spreading flag, that'd be good. So I'm pretty sure I want to branching paths twice for card draw. Fuck, that's bad. Fuck, that's bad. <laughs> I don't know where all of our cheap cards went. But we are not drawing them. This is a pretty cheap deck, all in all. In the light's name. So we're probably dead. Kind of drawn a weird pile of cards, but. Whoa! Man, well, these would be nice. Nourishes would have been nice. Maybe I should keep the nourish. Maybe that was a mistake. Patrick Jam says, sorry to spam, but Lakari Sacrifice just won a tournament game. No. No. What was the deck? Fire. I mean, this was just a heinous draw, so I don't really mind that. Isaac James is Sean. Been a long time fan, fairly recent subscriber. Just want to say how much I appreciate your positivity and perspective on life. I always look forward to any piece of content you're involved in and truly appreciate who you are and what you do. Keep on rocking, my dude. Man, thanks, Isaac. That's a great way to start our Friday. That was a good way to start our Friday. Malfurion versus Thrall. For Doomhammer, I must nice. protect the wild. I think I keep this whole thing. Lothias the Ancient, 53 months. And you got hired today. It's an amazing feeling. Dude, congrats, Lothias. Dude, what'd you what'd you get hired to do? What do you do now, man? So funny, man. This is so great to nourish for mana, nourish for cards. But yeah, this Malagos is a big source of damage. Alexstrasza is a big source of damage. Malfurion's a big source of damage. These three. Clueless is his name. Purely centered around Malagos. He's just a nice piece to it and often winds up finishing the game. Swipe is tempting, but let's get Malfurion up here, man. So we have Swipe and Spellstone. I can go Nourish, Arcane Tyrant, Swipe next turn. That seems really good. <laughs> I 
awake and aware, so it's not even think that giggling. <coughs> Excuse me. Inventor isn't as good as people think it is. I find it to be quite good. <clears throat> not straight busto, but very good nonetheless. So I can deal. <clears throat> Um, probably gonna have to blow this guy up. A tangled web. Seems like what I gotta do. Light and light. <clears> hmm. <throat> Excuse me. Gold, my friend, the bling is real. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So many nice defensive cards. So many nice. Oh, Lathias says, I don't know if you noticed, Sean, I didn't, so I'm glad you reposted, but I am a system specialist for UNC Healthcare. I'll be working on the nurse call systems as well as being a liaison and contact for the company that fired me. So a win for me. Dude, that's amazing. Congrats. We are under the strong presumption that we are up against today. Blood loosed deck. Lusty blood. Good old lusty blood. I think this is the better play by a large margin. Just look at the sheer damage we have on the boat. Look at the boat damage. <clears throat> Three fives with taunt. Okay, that's cleaning going on. I heard some scraping that was weird, so my, my little cat dad brain was like, the Kitty's okay? Here comes the bloodlust. <laughs> I'm taking extra hard note of what our friend Clueless is doing. She's doing a deck that I want to do. And I've chosen the she pronoun because of the excellent movie Clueless. <laughs> See, I just want I just wanna I wanna stress something right now. I wanna stress something. Notice how we are not on a suicide mission to some sort of Malagos combo win condition. This is just a deck that has many sources of damage. I wanna be very cautious about using that swipe. Yeah, this is the play. We're going to do this first. Branching paths we're not going to use. We're going to Giggling Inventor and Hero Power. We're going to Hero Power to get this. Use our 4-4 four, four to whack this to keep our healthy dudes alive. Use our 6-3 to hit this, or 5-5 five, five to hit this. And then we're going to play Giggling Inventor to close it out. In the next turn, we have the potential lethal with Branching Paths. Subtle Forces, female gamer, I want to thank you for using female pronouns for her early. It's such a small thing that it gets overlooked a lot. It means a lot to me, and I'm sure I'm not alone there. Awesome, thank you. I'm happy to hear that, man. I do think it is a under... Alright. 
And he's dead. He's an underdone thing. Heavily underdone. I've historically been certainly guilty of that myself. So. One of the excellent folk in the community actually mentioned it to me in a completely pleasant, uplifting, positive, sort of cheerful way. And I was like, yeah, it's actually a good point. I should do that one. And now we're destroying women handily with a Malago strip. <laughs> Is something they is pretty baller too. I've been doing some days as well. They is just comes out of my mouth sometimes, but my brain kind of has it ingrained that they is a plural pronoun, which is not actually true. It's been used as a singular singular pronoun for ages, but <laughs> it's like it's a so hard coded, it's so hard coded. Around the BAM, Sean, I want you to know that I've been watching you for more years than I can remember. You're an amazing person, I'll never stop supporting. Oh my god, thank you, Around the BAM. Now I want to test the limits to Around the BAM statement. Now I want to do some really crazy stuff, like just drink some goat blood on air out of a live goat. The goat's like, it, it's this amazing goat that speaks English and it's like begging, please, Sean, no, Sean, stop drinking my blood. And, like, and Around the BAM's like 5,000 bits. <laughs> Never stop supporting your goat blood drinking. I just love the way that he drinks that goat blood. It's just so positive and uplifting. I just can't express my thanks enough. Round the band, 5,000 bits for the goat blood. <laughs> No idea what our opponent is. None in the slightest. Um, Cobalt Librarian into Stonehill Defender would indicate to me a control deck, but a control deck that would then select the Serenite Chain Gang is very baffling to me. So maybe this is a zoo that's, in addition, running Stonehill Defenders, but no zoo would be life tapping this much. Yeah. Here's an easy thing to do, you just throw down the Arcane Tyrant on Forbiddenest Loop. Oh my god. Just abruptly death yourself. <laughs> Q block could be a Q block, but we got nourishes for days. So many possibilities. Gotta love void spinach so much. I really like working out and then eating a healthy meal afterwards. It really starts my day on the right foot. <sighs> Alright, bring out the Void Lords. Who dares so 
Oh my god, even better, because now we know we're not up against a cube. Mega thin. to just clear out. Alright, so we want to save one swipe. We don't gotta save two. That's a pretty good outcome. Two cards to go through, like, six of them. No Jesus, do you fast for your workouts? But typically not. There are times when the trainers are like, alright, you're going to be doing fasted cardio this morning or something like that. Um, but most mornings I have a piece of toast with eggs. Oh, yes. They'll serve me now. Oh my god, Silvos, that is so good. Where does a man splainer get his water from? From a well, actually. <laughs> oh my god, that's fucking so good. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm gonna blow that guy up. Mm, seems pretty good. Let's draw first. So good. All right, now we got to dump the hand. <laughs> I mean, I know it's a bit wasteful, but I really kind of want to empty the hand. We only have one card that we can draw that will be helpful for us. I might just double dump the hand. This is amazing. Well, guys, it's some amazing news. From Noxious says, Thanks for being a continuous source of inspiration 2018. I'm down 90 pounds since January myself. Holy shit, Noxious. Oh my god. 90 pounds? That's like... That is a substantial like amount of human being that you are down. I might just Giggly Inventor and play another card, because I think that the... No. There's a point. There it is! Kilgore Trout says I'm down 35 since April, but now I feel I've done. You shouldn't. You shouldn't, dude. Any bodily transformation is a fantastic one. Who 
Oops, 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 I'm trying to do this. The circle of life is over. Poison well, Spooters actually is pretty good in this particular deck. God, we gained so much armor. I don't even hero power, man. That's amazing. What mess have you summoned me to? And the funny thing is, the reason I selected to do this is because I wanted to get in some extra face damage. Because if we did that, then we would have lethal this turn. you think? Where is Malagos living these days? Oh yes, Glumbaris. I lost 80 pounds over two years so it went down eight inches around the waist. Such a mixed blessing when you have to throw out a whole wardrobe. Hell yeah! By the way, while our opponent's taking his turn, I want to remind all of you that the registration is currently up for the After Hours Gaming League. It's the forefront corporate league that Eric and I do run. Get together with uh, people from your various workplaces. Form a team in Overwatch, Heroes of the Storm, Hearthstone, CSGO, Rocket League, or PUBG. Goes to come down. After I was gaming, TV registration is currently up, which is pretty tight. If I could get Malagos now as the bottom card of the deck, that'd be pretty good. Team Bats just watched the last episode of Spellslinger's Top Job, dude. Great series. This season was so amazing. Wasn't this season so great? Oh my god, Spellslinger's was spectacular this season. Baby, baby, baby. I did. Whoops. Bit of a botch. I need to get better at this deck. Once I'm better with this deck, we'll crush our way up. GBS84 once says, look at the rules for HGL. I couldn't find a concrete answer to whether or not postdocs are eligible to play. When you say postdocs, what do you mean? Do you mean like if you're a postdoc at a university? Malfurion versus Uther. I will fight with honor. I must protect the wild. I think I needed to maybe not be as conservative with that swipe. So paladins are agrodonks. I don't value any of these. Postdoc at a university. Um, let me ask. None will survive. So the two games we've lost have been, I think undoubtedly as a result of our inexperience playing this deck, which is I'm super fine with, um, because I, I just don't really feel like 
reporting for duty. Doing any significant changes to this deck in the slightest. And that's always my biggest, you know, question after losses. Is like, should we change the deck? Is there something wrong with the deck? And if you look at the games that we played yesterday, <clears throat> excuse me, with the Malagod Druid. I do kind of think that... Um, I do kind of think this deck's, like, really strong. Or if you look at the, the, the Control Mage uh, shit that we did yesterday, I was switching in a lot of cards, asking a lot of questions, doing a lot of rotations. I really think that this deck is grand. And this is a good example of, like, a place where I could make a play mistake. Do we Ferocious Howl Heal here, or do we swipe? There's no risk of him doing any sort of buff with a Fungal Mancer or with a level up. So I think I'm going to Ferocious Howl for now. Be a little bit greedier with a potential swipe. Ron Flakes is whenever I'm down, I watch you fun in Mondays. On your YouTube. It never fail to make me laugh and feel better. Thanks a ton, my dude. Thrilled to hear it, Ron Flakes. I'm real proud of the StarCraft videos I did once upon a time. So this is a good swipe, going into the turn 5 of Victor Wins. And I can coin out Malfurion. Still have the Nourish Up, still have the Giggly Inventor. Just a war gear. I can't believe I'm about to do this, but I am going to Malfurion the Pestilent? For spiders? Yeah, I think that's the correct play here. What? I play this turn? I mean, I can hero power to kill a guy. Yeah, I think it's not the right play this turn. The order doesn't matter here, because I can hit and then kill with poison, or I can hit to pop the divine shield and kill with face. Um. Notice says, I love that SC2 is making a bit of a comeback. Yeah, and I mean, I'll say the same thing that I said yesterday. The StarCraft player base since Wings of Liberty was just constant. Slightly up, slightly, you know, but more or less constant for like seven years. But there was a huge drop in content creation when things like IPL went busto, when NASL went busto, when MLG stopped doing a lot of their tournaments, uh, you know, as WCS was coming up. And so you know what wound up happening? A lot of teams couldn't get enough opportunities for their players, so... Stop being as many teams, stop being as many streams, etc, 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 etc. Oh, you get to, you get to bonk some stuff, huh? Twig of the World Tree. I think... Much to my chagrin, I will have to... Spreading flag. And so a lot of the viewership went sort of went weird all around down, which I completely understand. There was a ton of what I would call risky speculation from a lot of uh, folks that didn't pay off for them. And when you have things that are secondarily built upon those, like teams and streams, people getting excited to watch a, a player prepare for a tournament, the turn itself, you know, not solvent. Mm. So that kind of did that thing. But in terms of the player base, it's always been very solid. And the craziest thing is that now, my understanding is that the Star StarCraft 2 has its highest player numbers and viewership numbers 
than it has had in its history. It's like currently tip topping itself out. You can just slam Malagos, yeah? The viewership for StarCraft 2 is going insane lately. And you can you can obviously point to any spike and be like, well, this one particular moment had a huge spike number, but I'm talking about like broad tournament Shh. overall stuff. And I'll credit, you know, I, I want to give huge props to all the foreigners who read Let Foreigner Team House. See. No regret, Scarlet, Kelzer was there. Um <laughs> Mm, blessing of Mike is not good. Reporting Maybe I'm misplaying these matchups. That is helpful. He can deal eight. Can he deal another three? A couple ways he can do that. Raynor. Doing well. GSL. But there's just a lot of stability at the top. There's a lot of the same names you see over and over. You win. I can rest now. I can rest now. There's a whole lot of those foreigners who have just gone to Korea, live in the team house, and just play a lot. <clears throat> and the top... <clears throat> excuse me, players in both Korea... <clears throat> oh my god! Ignore me! <clears throat> oh god. Jesus. Turned our curse into our strength. Job's done. Hmm. <clears throat> Jesus. It's kind of one of those funny body things where, like, there's really nothing significantly bad happening to my body. <clears throat> I just got either some pepper or some piece of bean stuck in my throat. But, like, my body's, it's like it freaks out. It's like, ah, oh, we're gonna die, we're gonna die, we're definitely dying now! Ugh. Oh, God. But, yeah, the top talent in Korea and in the foreigner scene, they're all really, really nice. They're all really consistent. It's the same names again and again and again and again and again, which is, I think, fantastic for the scene. I, I honestly thought that a lot of the volatility of the first two, three years of Wings of Liberty, I mean, it was kind of a shit show trying to keep track of players in tournaments. Like, the only names that had any consistency were the names that, like, me and Husky StarCraft covered in our shows. <laughs> like, those are the players that you wound up hearing about a lot. glad that the, there's the consistency that's there because I think that what you need for a healthy scene 
is repeated teams, repeated names, repeated identities, with maybe some new blood coming up. But when it's like exclusively new blood and like two names you know. It's kind of weird. Wow, what a draw. One. Two. So we're going to be up against some sea giants, but that's why we're saving our naturalizes. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Now this is really dangerous if he plays an arcane dynamo, because this is how you get bloodlust with an even shaman. Good turns, good turns, good turns. Good deck. Uh, hmm. Goddamn. But yeah, StarCraft 2 is insanely fun to watch right now. I actually woke up this morning and was watching Rotterdam stream. Oh my god, he played the most, come on, the most ridiculous game ever in, in Protoss vs. Protoss. He, uh, so in Protoss vs. Protoss, he opens Phoenix. Um, and for any of you who are not up to date on StarCraft 2, I'm assuming you at least have some RTS knowledge, so this can give some context. But this is just too cool, so Phoenix are a flying unit that have an ability that can lift up an enemy unit. So if you have a number of phoenixes, you can like lift up their probes, lift up their workers, and then use your other phoenixes to pick them off. And yeah, there are some additional, um, you know, units in Legacy of the Void, but effectively, The only thing that an enemy Protoss can do if you're building a lot of Phoenixes very quickly is they have to build Stalkers. They have to build this... The, the only early game anti-air that you have is Protoss. And so, what Roddy does... Well, what I should say... What you do if you open up with this sort of Phoenix play is you always transition straight into... Um... Three, six, nine... A lot... We're very close to just killing him, so may as well just get him down to lethal with hero power. So what you do when you open Phoenixes is you go to Immortals, the Robo Facility unit that's very good against armored units. And this kind of puts the enemy in a little bit of a pickle, and also you in a little bit of a pickle. It puts you in, or the enemy in a little bit of a pickle, because hey, he's built all these stalkers. So now I have Immortals that can pick off those stalkers, because Immortals are just anti-stalker units straight up. And if he tries to build, say, Zealots, 
which are pretty damn nice against Immortals. Well, you can just kite with the Immortals and lift up with the Phoenixes and shoot those down. But you also kind of have this reverse problem if you're going Phoenix Immortal, which is... Your Phoenixes can't really help the ground fight very much. You're kind of heavily invested in the Immortals. If, say, your opponent just gets too many Stalkers and overwhelms the Immortals, and it doesn't even matter. You have a bunch of Phoenixes sitting around there like idiots. So, here's what Roddy did. He builds a pylon right outside the front of the guy's base and builds three shield batteries. I must protect the wild. I keep the twig in the mirror. So he keeps a shield battery there, so he's just endlessly healing up these immortals. So he, like, runs up, shoots a bit, the stalkers start to come up, he, like, two shots the phoenixes while retreating, and then heals the, uh, uh, or two shots of stalkers while he's retreating, and then he heals the immortals waiting in the very last second. Shield what now? Ask her game, says shield what now? I haven't kept up since part of the swarm. Yeah, shield batteries. Shield batteries. Protoss has Adepts, which is a little anti-light unit that can throw out a shade, a copy of itself that can't attack, and in seven seconds it teleports to the shade. Um, really interesting harassing unit. Frankly, I think it's way too strong. I don't mean strong as in it's imbalanced and it disrupts the balance of the game. I mean, it's like too strong in that like if you're a brand new player and you're sitting down for your first time playing a match and then like Adepts come out, I don't know how new players deal with Adepts, like period. So there's that. Uh, there's the Disruptor, which is not it's surprisingly not used as much. But it shoots out a little ball that you can control. And after a few seconds, the ball explodes. So it's kind of like a reaver, except you can control the reaver shot. Cooldown's very long on the ball. One sec. I'll be right back. I want to make sure the kitties are okay. Sorry, typical cat dad panic. Alright. Ferocious Howl, because we don't really need the... We just need our Malagos and our good cards. So we're just going to draw a draw into... Yep. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we, maybe we do keep the branching paths? Maybe we do keep the branching paths? Woo! I am an experience with Malagos Druid. I think one of the coolest units in the Legacy of the Void is the Liberator. It's a flying Terran unit that can... It deals anti-air damage most of the time. Kind of like a big fat Corsair. But you can siege it up. What so it is? sieges in the air onto a target area, and then it shoots the ground in that target area. Let the pain speak to me. God, I think we do. For the wild. don't need to use branching paths for cards. Maybe you actually need to save it for the damage. Badger Snacks, thousand bits. I miss your SC days, especially your casting. Glad you're still successful. Much love. Thanks, Badger Snacks. Do you like 
Now, if Northwest is... I mean, we can hope we mill some stuff, but it's going to be kind of hard. He already has the Mechathun in there. This is just a Mechathun Druid, and I think we have a slightly unfavorable matchup to Mechathun Druids. Basically, need to Forbiddenness flute my way into the victory, and Ultimate Infestation would be good. That's fine, we'll just lose this game. <laughs> Jesus Louises. At least now trying to empty his hand. Maybe we just literally always preserve that. Wow, we got lucky. Okay. He's going to be running one naturalized, so he can make us burn some. to go down to three cards. Maybe this is where we save the naturalize. Jolteon. Whoopity whoop day. Ooh, hey, Jolte. 23 months, man. What if... Pleasure yeah, to see you, Jolteon. Well, we lost, and yet I have one more star. Moments is he used both innervates. Wait, did he actually use both innervates? I just stopped paying attention, man. That's so funny. <laughs> Demigod Dota subbed for that victory. What up, Demigod Dota? I gotta get back to streaming Dota, man. I should have not been on the Dota game for a pinch. I must protect the wild. Die, mage. I don't like this. What's the origin of So Six as Streppy? Um, God, it's a weird origin story. So. So, it starts with a great bit that my brother has about Chaos Caster. The, um, so Chaos Caster is Nick's character, where because he is in, you know, because he lives in Korea, and he winds up doing a lot of work just generally in Southeast Asia. He often is the only English caster, working with a crew of people that don't speak English.
And so, Nick likes to joke about the fact that, like, he could conceivably just say whatever the fuck he wants, and no one would stop him. You know, like, he's casting some game, you know, who would be casting... I recognize this deck. We were playing this yesterday. Casting, and then, uh, you know, like some shooting game that, like, there's some diehard fan who's, like, so happy to taste Dosis, like, considered the best casting duo in all of esports, they're casting his game, and he's so pumped about it. And then Nick just comes in and just says absolute nonsense. <laughs> it's a big, wide open map. And Nick's like, ah, oh, yes, a wide open map. This is a perfect map for shotguns. And the viewer would be like, no, this is a terrible map for shotguns. What is he saying that for? Just <laughs> like, <laughs> all that sort of shit. My calculations are flawless. Wow. We might not be in the best shape. So that's Nick's character, it's Chaos Caster. And, uh... For whatever reason... My friend Omer and I were talking about Chaos Caster. Omeroni that has introduced me to Dota 2. And... We just started doing this like, stupid gravelly voice with one another. We got the floopster, that's pretty tight. We can delay a turn. I got some extra uh, ultimate infestation would be nice. Let's draw a card. Let's draw a card. Ooh. We may win this game yet. We may win this game yet. So, so, you know, Omer and I just start talking to each other in gravelly voices, and I've always said so sick. Oh my god, sick. That is just sick. So sick. Everything's sick. Blah, blah, blah. And when you get the gravelly voice and you get sick, then all of a sudden Omer and I are playing a game of like, oh, okay. So sick. <laughs> and it's about a hundred times funnier. Alright, we're about to get penalized for delay of game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Go down to five. That ultimate manifestation is pretty nice for us. I guess I could have killed them both and gotten a 1-5. One, one Changed my mind of what I wanted to do. I'm not going to do that yet. What we need is the other Moonfire and the other Swipe. That's what we're trying to diggy dig for. Thus, so sick was born. Just, oh, so sick. He has an arcane explosion. Sucks a little bit. Not the most. You run good. Well, 
we we do need some time to live. Do not fear power. Fear those who wield it. Files just going in, man. Hmm. The ferocious howl is good. Seems like just the best that we could possibly do. Gotta sure get better with this deck. I think I'm still dead. I think I'm undervaluing how important it is to spreading plague and branching paths at the same time. You see, this is this is the type of deck that I actually think would work really well with these ladies, this Astromancer. Is this more board focused, controlly mage? Or I assume not control mage, uh, battle mage. I'm almost out of cards. I don't think that there's a damn thing I can do. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 and 9 is 21, 21 and 1. Yeah, let's just hit it with the well played. You win. I can rest now. I think I need to surge forward with draws a little bit better. It's it's actually kind of funny how like sloppy I feel playing this deck. And yet we've still gone even on the day. It's not like we're at a 30% win rate and struggling. Malfurion versus Mecha Really strong deck. Incognitus one. Seven years. Holy cow, Incognitus. Enjoy your platinum badge. Alright. Okay. I'm a simple man. I see a flame imp. I shoot. Someone called the doctor. <laughs> it's playtime. I don't think we're winning this with Moonfires. to gain the cards. Thought about playing Zulok? I have and I will never do it on Arius. Never ever. I mean, I know that I, it can be played for free, but I'm not gonna try to go for some sort of cool value play when I just, like, throw down this and it's just... Or uh, throw this down, it's like strictly better. Alright, so we'll get this to slow down at least some. Ooh, that's a good one to get. And it lets us get closer to the legend of the infestation. Good enough. We delay two turns. That is the question. Only we gotta cast this now. For the wild. Bits from Goodnight 14. Thanks for years of great content. I've been a follower of content for 10 years since the old Brew Boy days inspired. In a lot of ways over the years. Thanks, man. PS, here's a pick of us. MLG DC 2010. Holy shit, that is such an ancient 
period of time. That is like a legendary... Wow, God, my hair... I didn't put any product in my hair back then. It was. It's just all so poofy. Still have the chipped tooth. God, I remember when I used to think that was like a really nice outfit. God, I look like such a baby. Oh my God, good night. Look at you, you're just... You're in the best mood ever. That's such a great look. You just, just that's actually a really nice shirt. Good, and I really like that shirt. It's so colorful. Just give him the thumbs up. Wow. Fantastic pick. So I can hit this. Oh, thank goodness he didn't play anything scary. Oh, these guys haven't attacked yet. Oh, we're dead, and he's just playing more cards. Okay. I'm like busy looking at photos. Probably dead. I think I gotta do that. Need some, need some more games under our belt. Need some more games under our belt. <laughs> he draws Soulfire and shoots me. Soulfire or Life Drinker. Let him burn us out. Looks like he's still digging. Leftmost card is the burn. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're not really going anywhere. That's pretty good, but... Oh my god, my back is so tight. Really the West is someone who has never used hair products. I'm always a bit lost when people say they use product. It feels so vague as just a subject I'm completely ignorant about. You're right, it is such a weird word for shit I put in my hair. So I want the Innervate to go away. Innervate's an interesting selection for this. It's it's use is that you can dump it. You it, it you can use it to quickly get out some emergency cards, because that's what Innervate does, but Ultimate Infestation no, demands that you have survive. cards that you can chuck out of your deck. Excuse me, chuck out of your hand so you don't uh, overdraw. The light Purple Cloud blesses your hair with a fabulous little bit of pomade. Not that it doesn't already. I'm not the biggest fan of pomade. It just makes my head feel so sticky. I put it in conditioner, because I have very dry hair. It gets all curled up. It does feel like there needs to be like a better, more specific word instead of just product. It's just product. So turn three for Odd Rogue is typically Hench Clan, Thug, or a Fledgling. So we're hitting him with the Swips. Probably just going to be relying heavily on armoring up. Obvious synergy with Jasper Spellstone. I might go draw armor and then blow something up. This seems pretty good. You still use a straight razor blade to shave? I use a safety razor. It's gonna have Vile Spine Slayers, which will not really do terribly much for him, which is great. This is a nice turn. We get to do this, this, and then Jasper. So these might now be more useful for draws instead of for armor. Spreading Plague is mediocre in this matchup due to the fact that these decks rarely go wide. Oh my god, it's Orichalcum, the mysterious substance from Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. Yeah, it's really not a life-changing moment. Should I naturalize? I feel like, yeah, I feel like naturalizing seems pretty good. I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a card. Forbiddenness Flute. I'm gonna go ahead and draw another card. Alright, I like Ferocious Howl Naturalized. That seems like a pretty good play. Job done. <laughs> what are you using my hair? She's conditioner. When I get out of the shower. Put in the conditioner after I get out of the shower. I 
I'm still drawing. That's a nice one. We're just hanging up at over 30 life. That's nice. That's nice. After I get that hair transplant, man. Just got a full head of hair. Ooh. God, yeah, I'm gonna start going heavy on the products. Heavy on the products. This is just not that threatening of a situation to be in, so I think I'm actually just going to Alexstrasza him down. And then if he goes wide, then I just jam down these two puppies. Hit him with that wild growth. He might get a little alarmed, because this is going to be a considerable amount of damage. draw first. That twiggy, twiggy, twig. This is... Yes, this is when we want to put out the Forbidden Flu. This is, this is when we start to kill Orichalcum. Destroys Orichalcum power. Then he just says, my wife likes going to sleep to your stream, but requests you keep your relaxed tone of voice as when you get excited, it startles her. Thanks. You got it, Lady Zinniage. Mushroom power! Boo -doo -doo -doo. I mean, this could very well be. We just naturalize. The 1-4 and go in. For to win. Wow. Yeah, so this is this is 7 8 this is 16. Nice. Gonna go to the East Coast. Well, if I do, I must protect you'll be the first to know. Very least, I owe you one, huh? I think I do keep nourishes. I formerly was chucking them away, but I think that that's wrong. We have some ways to nourish ourselves a little sooner. It's AMA. Ask me anything. Alright. Are you a zoo? That's my first question of this here, AMA. Alright. On turn three, we're gonna just coin, coin, nourish so we can nourish back to back. And then we can ultimate infestation really get in it. Alright, so that doesn't mean anything yet. There's often a whiff to draw for these old guys. Yeah, I actually think Nourish is a pretty good card. I think we need to hold on to the Nourish. I can try. John Swan 100 bits says, Have you tried Control Warrior with Dr. Boom? I have not. I have not tried it. In a few decks, I have not tried it.
answering someone on Twitter who's losing their mind about the fact that they don't realize that After Hours Gaming does have StarCraft 2 Dota in League of Legends. This is good, because we don't want to do any of this. Alright. Dude, we are at almost 10 damage. Keeping Nourish is so smart. Gosh, man. It is remarkable. Uh, how... Just angry people are. About the After Hours Gaming League. Hello, hello. Song, I don't want to burn a card. I think I have to do this. I think I think I screwed a little bit. No. I, think I have to do this. I think I have to do this. I think I have to do this. So then I'm going to shoot him in the face, and then this will make sure that I don't overdraw. I actually want to go get some coffee. Coffee does sound good, doesn't it? They're not angry, they're passionate. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, let me, let me... I mean, are you doing that kind of jokingly? But I actually really do firmly believe a lot of people get that vehemently upset and grumpy because they really, really, really care. And it's... It, someone being angry is fine. I have no issue with people being angry. I have an issue with people being assholes. <laughs> that, I should clarify, is the issue I had. What is at least the trailblazer? I don't even know she was in rotation. Wow, we are one off lethal. Going in. I'm still polite to this person. Exciting for a moment. It's down or in. It's down a void lord. The circle of life is over. I think we got this one. It may not have been bad to just slam down Malagos like it was nothing. Alright, we're getting close. We're getting there. Alright, a one. Okay. Destroying demons. Tight. Oh my god, why on earth would you just let me turn into Jaraxxus and then kill me, man? This guy has made a mistake. -y. This is 
good. We're thinning out a little bit. We just kind of need a swipe. Uh, let's dig for it then, yeah. Cool, I'm the best. Alright, we win. Around the bam. 4,500 bits again. Sean, it's time to go. One last donation. Despy bits. Oh my god, I'm gonna let that sweet little girl know. Where is Despy? You know what? After this game, I'm gonna go give Despy some bit pets. Might not win, but that's alright. We're just going into face. We're doing what we can. I don't need no stinking twig of the world tree. Because this together, this is going to be 9 damage plus 12 damage, which is 21 damage plus another 3 damage. I love that my cats are emotes. Isn't that spectacular? I love that my cats are emotes. So much. Tried any hunter decks? I have not played hunter or rogue. Alright, well, he has 21, so that's good. Alright. You're suffering. It's a good deck. I feel, it, this almost feels like when you're first riding a bicycle where you keep getting thrown off balance in it. That was like our first successful kind of opening issue. I'm gonna get some coffee and water. Malfurion versus Morgul. I must protect the wild. missed my mulligan. I probably did. There was a tummy trap. No! Wow, that day nine guy is amazing. So we need the wild growths. We want the ferocious howl, I think. Maybe we chuck back the ferocious howl. I actually don't even know how I value her ferocious howl. I really don't. Dutch Gex says, I want to hear DK Golden say, so sick. Alright, so... Growth, growth, ferocious howl, twig, coin, ultimate infestation. Great. Hi, Despy. Oh my god. Here, these are these are from around the bam. There you go. Yeah. Hi. Are you here to tell everyone about Twitch Prime? Yeah, here. I'm gonna give you the information. It's in my mouth. Ha. Ha. Okay, cool. She doesn't want a thing to do with it. That's my girl. Okay, what's going on? Hi, we're smelling the coffee. Oh my god, we got a little princess. Hello. Mm -hmm. These are from around the band. How long could this go on? 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 Uh, I don't want to do this yet. Should have probably nourished. Alright. This is alright. Because I'll be at 7. I'm going to nourish to go to 9. And then swipe to clear that out. Does the sheriff visit anymore? Yeah, sheriff's right there. She sits in the sun. So I sort of actually create a sheriff trap. Um... So my little sweetheart loves being in the sun. So uh, I have curtains blacking out this window, so that way it, it stays nice and dark. <laughs> I 
and... Oh, I forgot to attack with a twig. Um, and so I've curled up just the very bottom. Curled up just the very bottom. So that way, Sheriff can sit in the sun. It's so nice. damage is important here. So, I think pretty soon, like probably this very next turn, I'm just going to Alex Strasser. Yeah, I love having that little kit in there. It's so, it's so heartwarming. Ooh, no, 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 no. This, this is, this is the play right here. Sheriff looks right now. Let me find. Oh yeah, that's right. She looks like that last cat, actually. It's a movie. Lightning storm. What parts of the new expansion are we using? Flabidinous Floop and Giggling Inventors. Sick. I just want to keep going in there. Peel for business floop. That's where we blow them out. Why not biology project? Um, again, I'd much prefer if you just actually stated why you think we should run that instead of why not run it. Like, why, why run a biology project? That doesn't really seem to need it, does it? Because he must clutch puppy. Instead of saying, why not do that, you could say, hey, here's why I think a biology project would be good in the deck, and here's what it replaces, and all that sort of stuff. Because I just don't really have any context when you say, why not biology project. Mr. Sakers. I think I need to actually be slamming down now fearing the pestilent more quickly. So really all we need is a fluke to blow him out, right? Actually played that many significant threats for Shutterwalk to function well. It's kind of nice, actually. We don't have to deal with it. all the board of obnoxiousnesses. I don't 
don't want to naturalize because he seems to be lacking in tools. draw a floop here, we just win. We just outright win. Face for branching guys. I'm just gonna draw. Whoa, pretty crazy, huh? Let's just draw a loop and end it. All right. Floop was the actual last card. It's okay, I mean... Even should Fong Fong... Gluttonous ooze us here. So pretty much fine. Alright, so we won. We technically did have. Oh shit! Oh my god, I'm frozen. Oh. Well, shit. Did we lose this? So I actually missed Lethal the previous turn if we played Malagos and shot him for 10. Glacial Shard is actually a really interesting counter to this. It's kind of funny that, like, I was one turn late with this. Alright, I think we can't win it, but we're gonna give it our best to go. I have a feeling he's going to play Shutterwalk. <laughs> Alright, we can't win now. Damn. You win. Well, I mean, I can rest still don't mind that game that much. We had... I, well, I don't know if it was guaranteed lethal, but I think, I think it actually was lethal, where we play Malagos, hit with the World Tree, and then go... Uh, Moonfire, Moonfire, Ultimate Infestation. I've never considered that combo once. Totally did not register to me that that's a really good combo. 
Or, hell, there's the other one, which is that we could go... Yeah, because this would be 10 damage and then 12 damage for 22. And I think he was at 20. I just leave a long way back near the full board of Spreading Plague. Smeet, if you could link the uh, screenshot of that. I don't think that's correct, but let's go ahead and investigate. Smeet 2, it is now your duty to get a screenshot of that situation. Because uh, the thing that's interesting to me about this deck is, again, it's not exactly... Play Malagos, Twig, and Floop and end the game. That's, like, a way that you can do a lot of damage. But, you know, there's a lot of, like, spreading plague into branching paths. There's a lot of, like, spread... Or, um, giggling adventure. Inventor into branching paths that can just, like, suddenly abruptly win the game. So, so yes, I mean, if you go to the game and rewind in time... I don't think that's correct, but I want to be sure because I feel like this is what feels like my biggest weakness in this deck is just whiffing a few lethals here and there. Crypto Crash, it's interesting that Malgo's deck has multiple win conditions. I feel like he's traditionally a borderline gimmick. Yeah, a lot of decks are just hard build arounds. Like, this is... You know, like, my deck, all I do is summon Malagos is, <laughs> good luck to me, you know, that sort of stuff, but. That's what I like about this one. Jasper it. Alright. The clear is clear. Still like our control mage. I'm a lot of, much better at that deck. I actually feel like I can execute that one skillfully. Spiffer's the grand. Sub for 31 months. I see 62 months. May as well resub my 31 then. Hell yeah. Omnipotential 62 months in a row. I think I may as well moonfire. I don't see a reason not to moonfire. Be jamming some Alex Straw's action down in a second. Nato Nine Nelson, do you think that it would be a good strategy to save back Alexstrasza for combo instead of playing her for tempo? Um, if I set to fifteen and I don't really see how I would be able to play it for combo. I bring life. For the wild. I think I could, um, I can reload the page, can't rewind via the clip. Yes, me, if you just go to my videos, you can just link to the timestamp. Or, well, all we need is a screenshot, so if you just go to the videos, go back, and then just take the screenshots to me, too, that'd be, that'd be perfectly fine. Just look in the VOD. Um, I think that I could theoretically delay Alex Straza, like, play Alex Straza to set up, and then... Is that... Oh, wow. Okay, we died. I could delay it as sort of like a setup for the Malios loop. I missed my control mage. We'll definitely do that second half of the day, for oh, sure. We want to get a little bit better with this one, because I think this deck is actually going to be a sort of consistent top tier. For Doomhammer, I must protect the top Renka, as it were. Our curse into our strength. All right, nice. 
Yeah, I think the nourishes and the wild growths are just all in. It's so good. All in all, so good. Mr. Cover says, honestly, I'm finding that Alex is basically the key to this deck. If you have Alex in hand and one charge left on Twig, you can basically just ultimate infestation. Previous turn, I swing, drop Tyrant Fable, and then 15 to 1, Twig, swing, also naturalized, held for a taunt. Huh. That is a very interesting observation. So you could play Alexstrasza, hit to set to 14. Then we've recharged to 10, shoot for 10. The calm before the storm. Putting our opponent to 10 life. And then if we get another Arcane Tyrant, we have an 8-8, eight, eight, a 5-5. Five, five. Ah. Alright, this, this is a really good draw. This is like a really, really, really good draw. Yeah, that's a that's a combo I did not even consider. Cool. Smooth says since, since you've been so much spent so much of your recent time streaming Hearthstone, you've considered going pro. Dude, hell no. I don't know if I would enjoy being pro at any game unless it was something that I could devote you know seventy hours a week to and still be super elated about it. All right, so we need to dig for something a little juicier, like that very ultimate infestation. Ambrosia. The wild. Arguably playing Malfurion's great too. I think I play Malfurion the Pestilent too late. I actually do want to do this this turn and start just completely disrupting the board. It feels like a good turn. Goes pro in Stardew Valley. <laughs> yeah, I think the thing about Brood War when I played that competitively, actually I only played Brood War for like 15 years. It's the only thing I did. Um, there's just so much richness there. There's so much depth. Hearthstone, hmm. I feel like there's a lot of variety to keep track of. But, like, the depth in Brood War of, of individual physical mechanics so satisfying to me. That physicality there. The way that the physicality intersects with the strategy is really, really beautiful to me. Really stimulating, honestly. There's nothing quite like it. Yeah, I know there was a miss. There, I know there's one missed lethal in the previous game, Rambo Nanny. We we talked about that, but. It's the spreading plague turn that Smee was referring to that we're interested in. Oh, I see. We play the Malagos, we hit. We swipe to clear, and the swipe is 9, setting our opponent to 27 minus 9 is 18. And then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 damage, setting them to 12. And then we have two Moonfires. Ah, nice catch. Nice catch. Nice. Yeah, I gotta look for those just a pinch more, because I know that, like, the big key to finding lethals is 
also using the damage on board instead of simply the Malagos burst damage. And you can see in that game, I was falling into that a little bit. I, think I still think I chuck back the Ferocious Howls. I think we just never want to keep Ferocious Howl. Because, like, I really enjoy Hearthstone as a thing to stream. Like, I really enjoy that. But you'll also note that I stream a whole bunch of different stuff, man. My streaming lately has been an expression of my appreciation for a variety of games. Um, well, this is great. We're going to wild growth, nourish, and try to prepare to ultimately infest him. So I think we do nothing turn four, maybe? No, I think I do have to coin Nourish this turn. That'll prepare for turn four. Yeah. For the wild. When is MTGA next in the schedule? You know what? Let me just flesh out the schedule next week. This is going to be on Friday next week. I've been a little irresponsible about updating those. New event. <laughs> Alright, let's set in some afternoon hearthstone on Monday. I want to get some programming in that morning. Right. Taking a little pain. That's great. Is there a way to cancel the casting of this card? There's not. There's actually not. It's already been cast. Okay. Should have gained one armor. That's technically really great, because we have a twig in here, man. So, on the 14th, we're doing some Hearthstone, and then our, our binge is going to wind down. And then... So we can actually just play Alexstrasza to set him low. Seems pretty nice. I bring life. Unless he just slams down a hook reaper, in which case, whoops. What? All right, looks like a dick in that person. That's great. All right, so which one of these do we shoot? Maybe I should shoot this one. TI group stages are going to be beginning. I believe that is accurate. Alright, I can kill that. TI group stage. So we're going to Ferocious Howl to gain the armor, so that way we can go kill kill on this. Seems pretty good, right? So we're going to Jasper this. Boink. And this little twiggy went all the way home. Yeah. Alright, let's see here. That's going to be on the 15th. Alright, so I think that this is not actually... I don't think this guy is actually that big of a threat. I think we want to save this for his thicker dudes. 
This might have been too early to do this, but, um... Actually, I'm regretting this as I do this. I think I maybe should have just nourished and howled. And I should have attacked. Alright, this is what's going to happen when we're updating our schedule and doing stuff at the same time. MTG Arena MIT Drafts. to do here today. Actually, we have so many card draws that this actually seems just really obvious, yeah. And then I do this. God, we're lucky. Always lucky every single time. It's not even close. We are always lucky. 1,000 million billion percent of the time. Sweet essence. That's it. Great. So we already have one swipe. I think actually I'm going to do this. The circle of life is over. Get these guys out. I'm going into the base, man. Next week's schedule's up. Next week's schedule, whoa! All right, and I think I, I think I know how to get lethal. <laughs> no! Can't believe he's done this. I know I have a flabidness floop in here somewhere. Assuming our tempo Alex draws in that game was good. Light and rot. I'm sure there's a Malagos here somewhere. Finishing Bloodborne. I have no idea. I have no idea. Our win rate is just over 50-50. We're struggling a little bit. Malfurion versus Anduin. The light shall bring victory. I must protect the wild. Is a priest doing in this meta? Death Knight 2018 says, Oh damn, I still have a sub. Hell yeah, Death Knight. Welcome back. How's the deck been doing? I think this deck is really strong. I think it's actually a very, 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 very strong deck. Larks, I really love the mage deck from yesterday. Hope you end up playing it or have variations sometime. I'm definitely going to play it later today. Whew. Now, this could be topsy turvy or control.
Could conceivably be the sprint as fast as humanly possible through my deck, Mechathun Priest. We'll see in a moment. No, actually, it would not run Awaken the Makers. That would be semi nonsensical. I probably won't need these swipes almost ever in this matchup, so I can use one swipe now. Tomato 9 mil says, do you get more money from a Twitch Prime sub or from a regular sub? They're actually identical. Which is why so many Twitch streamers plug Twitch Prime all the time. Obviously, like an ultimate infestation. Nourish is good here. And I'm assuming she's still happy for a while. I thought I was cheating streamers when I used my Twitch sub. That would be. That would be like. That would just be like such a bad business model. Asking shall receive. Um, so there's three cards that we can burn. Good. Not burn. God, I cannot speak this week. I really cannot. I, I, I gotta sleep more and sleep more soundly. My brain has been malfunctioning all week. <clears throat> Tiger Tulsa says, if you could put a zero at the end of anything in your life, what would it be? Number of years I get to be alive. I like living. Living's fun. I'm just gonna split spreading plague cold here. Now I probably wanna save this for post tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, I would really like to. Oh, you're upside down, Sheriff. Sometimes I stare at the cat for a really long time just to make sure she's alive. Wow, I haven't gotten to play this in some time. Alright, he's make making a mistakey. Number of hours in one day says collision. I would love if I had 240 hours a day. I would really love that. Stream for six. Read for 100. I mean, the problem is that I would have to eat seven times as much. Well, I could afford that, but. I, I am not actually convinced this is a good position for him. Interestingly, by not killing these things off, and by not having things on the board, he actually is going to burn another card here. So I'm just going to go hit, hit. We're going to burn a whole bunch of stuff. Alright, any takers on burning Anduin? Significant for us. Hand is 
too full. Oh my god, I can't believe how consistently I call it. I cannot believe. Why would anyone take me against that? Why would anyone? Why? I never take that bet against A9. Why would why any of you take that? The luckiest man in Hearthstone, you know it. And boom, two subs rolling. <laughs> Kapalum94 and Prince Extra... Prince Extra Fly? Prince Extra Fly. Alright, I got it. I got your name. Must... Alright, what's cooking? Good looking. My deck. Okay, this is gonna look really, really weird. I just don't need these branching paths anymore. I'm trying to empty out my hand so I can just make the station. I hope you understand. We're going to mill one. This is a little bit concerning of a situation. Okay. Woo! Okay. A little bit gambling, a little bit gambling. I think we did it. I think Zach's dead. This is just at four, so. So we, we got a twig right away and start hitting. No and one. Coming anytime soon. Archbishop Benedictus is late. one I want to do. If he starts getting low, he's going to Amara, and I'm going to Alex Straza in response. Mind Blast is a threat. Mm. It's much less of a threat now that uh, Shadow Reaper Anduin's dead. EXC Zealot says, hey, D9, what does career advancements look like for someone in your position? Just dependent on steady growth of dedicated subscribers slash viewers. Maybe career advancement is the wrong term, but essentially, what does five years from look like? Three, ten. Consider. Yeah, career advancements are really weird things. Streaming. Really, like, profoundly, bafflingly odd in a number of ways. All right, he now has a Malfurion, the Pestilent, and a Moonfire. God, that is so annoying. But I was annoying as a subcoming turn. Good thing I hero powered last. Burn a mind blast. Oh, it was purple. Yeah, it's really weird because um, 
you have to be like it's really hard to just consistently grow viewers essentially no streamers have just done that over time you kind of have like rises and falls and rises and falls it's interesting it's it, it, it is I'd almost call it like a smoothed out version of being an actor because with an actor it's like you're getting no money and then you act and you get a spike of money and then the acting is done and then you gotta act in a new thing and then you get no money and it comes back and you get money like But in this, it's like you sort of work up, and then it like fades away. Work up, fades away. And so, simply the fact that I have been able to maintain very strong viewership for a long time, I feel good about that. <laughs> I feel great. Um, there is uh, this weirdness, though, where, like, I, you know, I don't... A, a lot of this is just I'm still alive 30 hours a week and that sort of thing. So, um... Rotten to my core. So there's a number of ways to look at it. One is, okay, well... Mm, this is not like this position at all. Oh, we're gonna do this. I mean, if Zack just blows up our weapon, it's going to be a little bit of a, an obnoxious sequence of turns, but... Hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, the, the simple statement is, on one hand, I could just go, yeah, no, this is good. I could probably do this for 10 or 15 years, and then people would probably not give a fuck <laughs> about Day 9 anymore. I think I got, I think I got up to age 40. I think I feel pretty confident. I'm good at hosting things, just good at hosting general gaming things. Uh, must consider. Pretty good stream. Um, and I could just do that for like 10, 15 years. And then after that, switch to something much more creative, like writing a book. <laughs> the other thing is create something that can make money that I can direct my stream or my viewers towards. He does both weapons in one. Alright, cool. Such as if I wrote a book in the midst of all this. Yeah, no, it's stupid. I'm sorry, dude. Sorry, Zach. So this is where you see, you know, YouTubers and streamers do things like uh, product lines. A great example, Michelle Fon, the makeup YouTuber that started her own makeup products company. It's great. It's much more extensible. Malfurion versus Anduin. The light shall bring victory. I must protect the wild. So something like that. Um, I mean, I'm I'm learning more Unity stuff and just fiddling around in Unity. Maybe one of those turns into a real game project. Whoa! And then that would be a way to do growth. Um, but I'm very cognizant to the fact that working on a game comes in two phases. Phase one is the design phase, figuring out what the hell the game actually is. And then phase two is the production phase. Phase two is the, this is going to take like two years of just churning shit out. And it's going to be very grindy and it's like an organizational problem. The design phase, what is the game? This is the heavily unknown, real danger. This is the, this is the big danger with games. This is the big is danger. Injured? So, given that I'm very cognizant of that, you know. If maybe one day, this is a strictly better play to blow this guy up right away and make sure that he doesn't draw any cards from me. So as I'm fiddling on, you know, little prototypes, trying to figure things out. Um, the end is coming. Great. Maybe one of those, you know, inklings of an idea of hey, maybe this could be cool. 
very possible that one of those could turn to a cool game project. Um, so does Dan have any other projects other than to stream the HGL? HGL's the big one. What is real? What is real? I don't think I know what our opponent is. I elect to hit him in his face. So the fact that we get to ultimately infest him next turn is really... Uh, we have a lot of stuff with the Discord that we do. We do the day-night festivals. We do the 30-day projects. We're doing another 30-day project. So. Chronos, does my company have to be located in California and participate in HGL? No, it's online only. Let us know, man. AfterHoursGaming.tv or ahgl.tv or discord.gg slash ahgl wherever you want to go. Pick your poison, friend. Alright, we got the floopster. Um, if you guys have any questions about After Hours Gaming League, let me just link the... Uh, FAQ after hours gaming. Thank you. Okay, so I think very clearly we gained one billion armor. Close to just blowing up with a branching paths because next turn with this is five, this is ten. Ten plus six is sixteen. Sixteen plus four is twenty. Alex Straza and hit the face Mind seems very scary. Me. How many? One. Blueprint has one. All right, one. Found a typo. Nice. We got him. Bye, Blueprint. Um, the Discord's a big one. A lot of the community support things are the big ones. And then there's Stream and HGL. Yeah. Those are the active projects. I want to talk about this more after I use this quick restroom break. <laughs> 